I thought to myself, you know, if Jesus was alive today and Jesus was trying to gain the biggest audience he could, he probably wouldn't be able to reach them all in a church service room. He probably wouldn't even be able to reach them all with just a sermon on YouTube. He would probably be making movies because Jesus was always telling stories. He called them parables. And he would talk about, you know, characters. He, the, in fact, the story of the Good Samaritan, that's a made up story. Jesus just made it up like it was his own movie. He said, there once was a man who was walking down the road and on the way he got beat up by some robbers. You know, Jesus was a great storyteller. The story about the father and the two sons. Everyone thinks that's like a true story. He made it up. It could be a true story. But he said, suppose there was a father with two sons and one of them, you know, decided he wanted his inheritance. And then he went out and partied, lived, lived in a wild lifestyle and then decided he, you know, his only option was to come back home, be a servant for his dad. But his dad met him on the road, hugged him, forgave him. Jesus was always telling stories to convey the principles of the kingdom of God. I think if he was alive today, he would do stories maybe on Netflix, maybe on Amazon Prime, maybe in the movie theater. He would make movies, TV series to try to show what the heart of God is like. And so our church decided to get more involved in the arts over the last several years. My brother John has done a great job helping build a team of, yeah, great artists who are right here in this church. Everything you're going to see on this film was people right here in this church. Actors, well, they weren't, you know, like paid professionals. They were just church members who said, I want to be a part of what you're doing. And this year we decided to make a film, a story, really around kind of what we've been walking through in 2020, a pandemic. And uh, I don't want to give too much away. But in this story, there's a question that I think all of us need to be asking ourselves as we watch this film. And if you want to, you could scoot in kind of towards the middle. If you're on the far side, you could scoot in. There's several chairs up there to see this. It's about 34 minutes long. And uh, then out of it, I'll close out with a few last thoughts. But the question this film is going to ask is, how's your vision? How do you see your life? How do you see God? How do you see this pandemic? How do you see people around you? Right now, it's election season. How do you view what's going on in our nation? What is your vision like? Is it a vision of confusion? Is it a vision of love? Is it a vision of hate? Is it a vision of, uh, a vision of division? Is it a vision of strife? Is it a vision of faith? Or is it a vision of fear? How is your vision? That's what this whole parable is about. And so on behalf of everyone who worked really hard here at Victory for this, it's my honor and privilege to present to you O-Town. has gone blind all at once. Researchers believe the chemical is dispersed through the air. This place is like Chernobyl. They should all leave immediately. Stedman Oppheim may have cured blindness. You just have to wear these glasses. This guy is a genius with a heart of gold. Congratulations on your respective appointments here at Recite. My name is Jenna, and I serve as liaison to the office of our CEO. Now, as I'm sure that you are aware, Recite is the industry leader in the fight to cure blindness once and for all. When a chemical spill caused citywide blindness, Recite moved its offices right here to help. The glasses that you are wearing are what's enabled this town to have their eyesight back. Synced with an app on their phone, the glasses allow one to see not just what's around them, but also connect with their favorite entertainment sources. This way, Recite has become one of the world's most popular brands, 
alleviating not just blindness, but boredness as well. Any questions? Well, why don't we take a short break and when we return, we will watch the short video about our CEO. Sarah Mahler, MIT grad, smart girl, follow. Oh, and what was his name? Judd. Judd. Judd Oxley. Okay. Huh. Very, very isn't. Okay, I am going to sync up with your glasses now and watch this. Stedman Alpine, visionary, genius, American hero. Even from an early age, it was clear the young man was gifted with a brilliant mind and a heart of gold. At age seven, he invented an EKG machine for less than half the cost of the cheapest alternative and donated his blueprints to his local children's hospital. At 19, he developed an algorithm that predicted stock futures within 9% accuracy, making him the wealthiest teenager in human history. But not everything was easy for the young billionaire. After his mother went blind, Stedman pivoted his talent in the direction of eliminating blindness from the earth. Resight, named for restoring sight, was born. When a chemical spill caused blindness in every person in the Midwest, Alpine moved his company headquarters to unveil his newest invention, the Resight glasses have restored sight to nearly the entire town at no cost. Grateful, the town renamed itself after Oppheim, O-Town. In preparation for a mass market takeover, Oppheim's glasses are undergoing rigorous testing to ensure they'll responsibly restore sight to blind men and women around the world. With a video like that, guy's got to be full of himself. Mr. Offheim, wow. Yeah, these are our new team members. Thank yep. you, Jenna. Isn't she, guys, isn't she lovely? Friends, I am so glad that you are here. You are making history right now. Judd, my man, so good that you're with us. Sarah Mahler, fellow MIT grad. Come on, she came here, and she exposed herself to temporary blindness just to help us find the cure. And listen, last but not least, Alex McCormick. Why don't you tell everybody why you're here? Uh, yeah, so I invented a neurotransmitter that might sync with the glasses, so that way you can control the screens without using your hands or your voice. So you're saying that we would be able to control the glasses with our thoughts? Maybe uh, part of the reason I'm here is to test them. Why don't you tell them the other reason you're here? Uh, yeah, so you guys were exposed by this airborne whatever it's called. Um, unfortunately, I was born blind, and so these glasses are the only thing that helps me see. Did you catch that? First born blind, life transformed. Come on, Resight giving sight to the blind. I am changing the world. We, we are changing the world. Would you guys like to know your first assignment? Jenna, let them know. Yeah, so we are beta testing Alex's new software with a feature where the glasses will begin to beep if you drop them or forget where you've put them. We've had trouble with them working outside, so we need you all to and this test is, them. Listen, this is going to be very, very important. If we're ever going to get past everybody at the Daily Chronicle trying to make my life a living, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. The newspaper? You're a tech company. Why would you even care what they say? You know what, Judd? Let's talk about it. So, friends, I, uh, I think I know why the town is going blind. Now, I know the prevailing theory is that there was some sort of chemical spill that has caused the airborne pandemic, but I want you to take a look at this. I'm going to sync up your glasses now. Okay, so what you're seeing, these men, Carl and Elliot Jones. So these guys are pure evil. So they run the Daily Chronicle, and somehow, if you'll look 
they haven't gone blind yet. And then here, I want you to take a look at this. And so somehow these guys are staying in business even though no one is reading their paper. So what are you suggesting? Yeah, so I, I think that the newspaper business is a cover for a cult that they're in. Human sacrifice, that kind of thing. I want you to take, take a look at this right here. You see that? How crazy is that? Oh, yikes. That's some village level scary. Okay, now I want you to look at this. So I don't think the chemical spill is what caused the blindness. I think that the Jones brothers are out to blind the town because no one is reading uh, their paper. So it's I'm thinking that they are poisoning the water supply. So why haven't you told the police about them? Yeah, because they need more evidence. So more than these pictures and the fact that Everyone went blind. Yeah, um, okay, so they may have the police spot, we don't know. I am trying to do everything I can to compile as much evidence as I can to take it to the FBI. I mean, there's even talks of them having a monster um, out in the woods. Did you say a monster? Yeah, a uh, monster, some sort of uh, weird creature. Hold on, let me look at these pictures. See? Now, look at that on YouTube. This is crazy. Yeah, it uh, it is crazy. I came here to test software, see if we could cure blindness, and now I find that there is someone poisoning everyone. And, and for what? <sighs> for a newspaper that literally is so full of itself that no one reads anyway. So listen, uh, I need you guys to promise me, uh, because of everything I've told you, uh, please just stay away from the woods. Can we make an agreement on that? Stay away. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. Okay. Look. I still think this is a prank. There's no way this guy's that smart and actually believes that two old guys are running a cult in the middle of the woods. <laughs> or that they poison the town. I don't know, guys. He seemed pretty serious to me. We should find out. What? Let's go out to the woods. <laughs> no. No. Look, we don't even really know what- There they are. are! Are you kidding? What? Yeah, that's them. And they're not wearing their glasses? Oh my gosh, we have to follow them. I have to know. Alex? Yes? Come on, it'll be fun. Uh, fine, but only for a little bit. So we. <sighs> I see them. They see 
see us. Run! Run! Friends, we are so glad that you are here today, and let me be the first to say on behalf of Recite, we're so grateful for you. Now, with that being said, today's meeting is going to be confidential in nature. Uh, this is top secret information, okay? And this is information that you might find very troubling. I know I did. Now, you've heard it said that the reason for your blindness is something in the air, an airborne pathogen, right? It's, it's, it's in what you breathe, it's all around you, but I want to contend to you that it's actually not in the air, that the cause of your blindness is actually found in your community's water. Now, I can tell you that most people, most people, most people would settle for sickness. I can tell you that most people, most people, most people settle for disease. And I can tell you that most people, most people, most people would settle for blindness. And any time you try to do good in this world, you will have enemies. But, but people like us, people like us, people like us focus on solutions. People like us, people like us, people like us focus on changing the world. And people like us, people like us, people like us never give up. Come on. That's why here at Recite, we are focused on being a part of the solution. We have created water filtration systems that are going to attack this at the root of the problem so that your water is no longer just safe enough to bathe in. No, it's not only safe enough to wash your clothes in. My friends, it is safe enough and clean enough for you to drink. Here's to Recite. I don't know, but he looked right at me at the part when... Hey, Jenna. Hi, Alex. Uh, Mr. Oppheim would like to see you in the conference room, okay? Uh, okay. Um, did he say what it's about? I know Stebbins a really busy person. <laughs> Mr. Oppheim. And no, he did not say. Have a seat, Alex. You like your job, don't you, Alex? Um, of course, I like my job. Um, I mean, I was blind before I got here, so I mean... That's right. You were blind. You were blind, and I gave you the ability to see. How are those glasses, by the way? Good. You got the latest update? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I see them? Yeah, of course. Yes, sir. Thank you. <sighs> Alex, you know the satisfaction that comes over a guy like me being able to see the beauty of what he's created and the gift that's given so many. And then you come along, this genius scientist, been born blind. It's absolutely amazing. These aren't real, Alex. You can see. Did you lie to me? No, no, I, I didn't lie to you. What happened out in the woods, Alex? N nothing, I didn't. How, how did you know about that? Better idea, Alex. How about I, CEO, ask the questions? How about you, employee, you answer the questions? So answer me. 
Who gave you the ability to see? Fine. This is what happened. Kid, you want some coffee? Here we go. Thank you. How come I can see? Now, here's the deal, young lady. Everything you heard in that town is a lie. And these are not all they're cracked up to be. What do you mean? I mean, you were told a pandemic made everybody go blind, right? Yeah, was well, that not true? Well, sort of. There was a pandemic, oh, and it did make people go blind. But then this fancy rich fella came along and take advantage of the opportunity. What do you mean? Here's the deal, kid. Anytime something really crazy happens in the world, people show up to help, right? Yeah, but is that wrong? No, no. But not everybody who claims to help is actually helping. In this case, it was this man right here. Do you know him? Yes, I do. The whole town actually knows him. He's the one who gave the whole town their sight back. And he hates you guys. Of course he does. He thinks you guys are running a cold here out in the woods, and you hate people that don't read your newspaper. Our dad always said, truth sounds like hate to people who hate the truth. So did your dad start the paper? Uh, he inherited it, just like we did. The Daily Chronicle's been around longer than any of us can even remember. Then how come Stedman says it's a hateful paper ran by evil men? Hey, his words, not mine. There's nothing wrong with our newspaper. We've been publishing good news for decades. But when you read it through these things, they interfere with what you see on the page. And it's not just with our paper. Everything you see or read or peruse with these glasses on, it's influenced by whatever company bribes Stedman with the biggest pile of money. These glasses are his way of controlling the narrative. There was a pandemic. Sure. Everybody went blind. Sure. <laughs> we even went blind at first. <laughs> yeah. And, and then we found the cure. <laughs> Wait, you guys found the glasses? No, no, not the glasses. The ink, the ink in our newspaper is the antidote to the chemicals that were in the water. Yeah, so what did we do? <laughs> we dumped our ink straight into the water supply to help the town. And then what did Stedman do? He donated a filter to protect the town from the chemicals. Yeah, it was airborne till he found out we put the cure in the water for free. This is blowing my mind. Listen, these glasses don't cure you. They only show you what he wants you to see. What? What? You still need them? Look, you fell in the water right after we dumped ink in. You're fine. You can see. 
you can actually see. I can't believe this. Why haven't you guys told the whole town about him? <laughs> we have been every day in the Daily Chronicle. But no one ever reads it. And even if they did, they don't realize what's actually in it. Hmm. Here, read it for yourself. And I bought these fakes on the way here, so there it is. That's what happened. You're a liar, Alex. I'm not lying. I mean, look, all I'm saying is I couldn't see for 26 years, and now I can. Because of me! Because of me! Not because of two idiots in the woods peddling some sort of ink. Because of me. Oh, and they told me something else about you, too. Oh, did they? Save it. You're fired, Alex. Oh, well, they also told me what your glasses do to people when they're sleeping. Yeah, that's what I thought. Your updates program the glasses to keep people blind even worse, so they stay dependent on you and your product. And you knew about the ink, so you invented the water filtration program. You're keeping them blind so you can continue to make money. Money? I, I give them away for free. Sure, but these advertisers are paying you big bucks to get free airtime to promote your product. Where'd you get these? In the Daily Chronicle. They've been trying to warn us about you all along. Hmm. Have they? Yeah. Alex, that's too bad. I have big plans for you. What? <laughs> Carl? Elliot? Is, is that you guys? What's going on here? Okay, we'll get right back to O-Town in just a minute, but I wanna just pause for a second and talk about what you just saw. You see, Alex has just discovered that her boss is profiting off of this vaccine, and he's keeping people in a place of blindness for as long as possible so that he can keep making money off them buying glasses from him. She just found her sight. She hasn't been able to see her whole life, but now that she's got her sight, and how did she get it? When she touched the water, the water was connected to the newspaper, the ink. Can I tell you right now that God's word is more powerful than anything else? What we're seeing right now in this film is an allegory. That ink represents the word of God that gives us sight, it gives us hope, it gives us vision. Do we believe in modern day medicine? Absolutely. Do we believe in hospitals, doctors, science? Absolutely. But we also believe in the word of God. And we believe that when we're walking through a crisis, something that's difficult, something that the world says, there's no way around this, there's no way to get through this, we believe we have a promise from God. And when we get into God's word and we begin to study his word, it opens our eyes to see. It opens our hearts to be able to live with faith over fear, to overcome discouragement, depression, disappointment, anxiety about the future. We have a promise from God. Let's watch and see in this film if everyone else will begin to recognize that what they're seeing right now is not as it seems and that the vaccine, the real answer, is lying out there for all of them. I pray that you'll see what God has in store for you. Let's get right back into O-Town. Sarah, I'm uh, headed to lunch. You want anything? Nope, I'm good. Thanks, so. though. Hey, Alex uh, hasn't been around in a few days. Have you seen her? Nope. What is that? What's what? This. OK. Lunch. You may 
make it look easy. All your friends are gonna notice. You make it look easy. Go on and do what you do. All of this, all of this, all of this looks like gold. What you touch, what you touch, what you touch turns to gold. Take off your glasses. This girl is crazy. Okay, stay right there. Okay, I'm gonna shut your door. Okay. Alex, what is going on? And where have you been? Shh. I'll explain in a second. All right, and stand right here. Alex, will you please tell me what's going on? What the? What are you doing? Rub it in your eyes. What? In your eyes. See? Where did you get this? Is this what Stedman has you working on? No, forget Stedman. This is what happened. <laughs> Carl? Elliot? Is, is that you guys? What's going on here? We had big plans for you, Alex. We really did. Jenna? Sarah? Guys, what is going on here? You need to help me. Stepman isn't who you think he is, okay? Uh, listen, remember how I, could, how I couldn't see? I can see now. I don't even need the... Guys, what is that? Guys, what is that? That's what happens to people who read the Daily Chronicle, Alex. What? That wasn't even a real monster? Well, this is disappointing. So no monster? Oh, he's a monster, all right. Yeah, Judd, we have to stop him. He started in O-Town, and now he's going all over the world with this. And he's got the resources to get it done. Yeah, he already has a bunch of companies asking and begging them to take their money. And it's all for a future ad spot. And what these ad spots do is put him in a revenue of billions of dollars. That is a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money, and it's a lot of people going to be living in fear and frantic for the rest of their lives. It's like they're not even human. They're just attention farms. They're planting entertainment, and they're harvesting money and power while they don't even get the cure that they need. It's not fair. Judd, you have to help. What could we even do? You know how Stebman has us take our glasses off at night? Yeah. So that means that the update is only ran while we're sleeping at night. Right, so the update can run and download A-B testing. Right. So you're gonna bypass the security and update the glasses during the middle of the day. Okay, and then what are you gonna do? You'll see, literally. I'm a game changer. I'm a risk taker. I don't hide from the battle. The battle hides from me. I'm a game changer. Won't see me run from danger. I don't hide from the battle. Hey, are you in there? But I still don't see how this is gonna work. Listen, 
The town's water supply has been filtered by Stebman's water filtration program. But the ink in the Daily Chronicle can cure everyone. If I can have you send an update, I can hose everyone down. They'll take their glasses off and I'll hose them with the water that isn't filtered by Stedman, and we can expose him as a fraud because they'll all be cured. Okay, better hope this works. Hurry. Ready? Did you guys get a reboot? Like a yeah. Oh, gosh. What, what is that? And, sir, if you could uh, forward over that paperwork. Reboot. Paperwork. Would be great. Did you do this, Jenna? No. Jenna, Jenna we get updates at 2 AM. I need you to go fix this now. No, no, no! Jenna, get out of my sight! Sarah, here now! Hey, Judd! Get back here! Sarah, everything, everything has to be wiped. We've got to start over. Hey, everyone! You don't need those glasses anymore! Stedman was trying to keep you blind this whole time. Guys, this is what you need. Reboot. This is what you need. Hey, okay. update's done. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. That, no, 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 no. Don't put those back on. Guys. It was him. He has been with Alex Get the whole time. Get Why are you still talking? Get out. Fine. Judd, my office. Now. I'll be right in. I could have told you what would happen. Yeah. It's a real shame. It sure is. I just don't get it. Like, I solved their problem. They could see. Well, here's the deal, kid. People don't necessarily want to see. Then what would they want? <laughs> they want to be entertained. And they want to be told that their opinions are right and that their fears are real and, well, that the products they're going to buy are going to heal them. But that's not going to work. <laughs> no argument there. But... Being able to see objective reality means you're going to have to confront some things about yourself that need to change as well. And when you read our paper, you get a chance to better yourself. But not everybody wants that. Right. Except for people like you. Well, you're here, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And Judd, too. As soon as he gets here. Hey, uh, let me get you some more coffee. So here's the deal, Judd. As you know, we've already had to get rid of Jenna. Sarah's going to take her place as my new assistant, and I need someone to take her place. So what I'm looking for is someone to be a plant with the new hires. With that, you're going to get a pay raise, you'll get some stock options, and there's a ladder that you can climb as a result of that. That's her. Yeah. <sighs> Here's the deal, Judd. Uh, I can make you a rich man. Or you are welcome to go back into the woods and peddle newspapers. But you blind people, just so you can sell them a fake version of sight. Well, sure, but I mean, a very expensive version of sight. Anyways, you should answer that. Think about it, Judd. End of the day, you get to choose. 
Blind? Or broke? Hello? Dude, where are you? Congratulations, everyone, on your respective appointments to recite. My name is Sarah, and I serve as liaison to the office of our CEO. Now, as you may know, Recite is the industry leader in the fight to cure blindness once and for all. You know, I was sitting there and I was thinking about just so many connections with God's word for our lives. And as we come to the end of service tonight, I was thinking about how in John chapter 9, Jesus healed a man who was born blind. And when he healed his eyes, he took saliva, which is just wild. Jesus spit in the ground and he rubs his saliva in the dirt and he rubs it in the man's eyes and he says, go wash in the water of Siloam. When the man went and washed in the water, he got his sight back. And the people who rejected the miracle, who rejected what happened, were the religious people. They said, there's no way that could have happened. There's no way that this man was born blind and now he can see. And and this man must be a sinner. So the religious people start complaining. Jesus flips the story at the end of John chapter nine and he says, the people who claim to see are the ones who are actually blind. The ones who recognize they're blind and they need vision and they come to the savior for vision are the ones who can truly see. Jesus basically showed this miracle to show that all of us need the vision from the savior. All of us need to get our sight from God, all of us have some sort of blindness, whether it's blindness of doubt, blindness of fear, all of us need to get the eyes that Jesus wants us to see with. I remember when I was younger, my dad used to ask me so many questions about vision. And he would ask me, Paul, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see for the future? What do you see in that person? What do you see in this situation? Our vision determines the direction of our life. Our sight determines how we treat people, how we treat ourselves, even how we handle this pandemic. Right when the pandemic hit, I remember a quote from Miles Monroe. When I was younger, Miles Monroe came and preached at our church. And he said, in the midst of crisis lies great opportunity for those who can see it. In the midst of crisis lies great opportunity for those who can see it. And he said this, I remember these words. He said, when there is a crisis, when there is a problem, Leaders who have a vision of faith are able to see forward what needs to be done. In the midst of this pandemic, our church has been able to feed millions of meals. We've been able to lead thousands of people to Christ, but we never would have done it had we looked through eyes of fear instead of eyes of faith. You can be a believer and still have blinded vision in certain areas of your life. You can be a believer and still have distorted vision. Even people with sight have to go get their eyes checked. Even people who have glasses and contacts have to go and get their eyes checked to make sure that the vision is still strong. My question for you is how's your vision? How's your vision right now? How are you seeing your life? How are you seeing the problems in your life? How are you seeing God right now? How are you seeing the people in your life? And when we look at that, that story of O-Town, and it's, you know, there's, there's so many things about it that I think are connected to this, but once the girl began to see that this man who promised her vision and sight with these glasses was actually a fraud, that once she began to see that the ink in the water, the ink in the water is what gave her her sight. The ink is what gives us sight, a revelation of God's word and the washing of the water of God's presence gives us vision. When we begin to see what God says about us, when I begin to read what God says about me, my life, my problems, I begin to see with eyes of hope and not despair. I begin to see with eyes of faith and not fear. I begin to see with eyes of love. You see, even Jesus said there was people who would listen to his sermons, but they had deaf ears. So it would never really sink down deep. There was people who would watch his miracles, but they had blind eyes. Sure, they might have seen naturally, but they couldn't see supernaturally. When we get a revelation, the ink and the water, when the girl was able to truly see, she began to be she began to see the exposing 
of the deception of that man. When we begin to see God's word, we see the exposing of the deception of what's going on in our world right now. Can I tell you that the enemy will continue to profit off of our dysfunctions until we get a revelation of God's word and we expose that deceiver and we say that is a lie from the pit of hell. I'm a child of God. I know who I am. I know whose I am. The enemy profited off of my fear as a young guy growing up. Young kid, growing up as a pastor's kid, I was always afraid of what people thought. I constantly lived with the fear of man. I was wearing my glasses. I don't have a pair of sunglasses. Oh, I do. I asked Jamie to grab me a pair. I was wearing these sunglasses. Come on, I was just like O-Town. And I thought I had vision, but my filter was off. And I wonder if some of you, your filter is off. You're looking at things through a filter of the fear of man you're caring too much about what people think, or you're looking at things about the fear of lack. Some of you are looking at your finances right now, and you think you see what you need to see, but God says, you need to see with eyes of faith. You need to be set free from a, a vision of scarcity. Once you see that the world was created by God with abundance, everything changes when your vision moves from scarcity to abundance, from fear to faith, from hatred to love, from despair to hope. Church, when we get a vision, a revelation of who God is and what God says about us, God's word is the only narrative that we should be looking at right now in America. Even when I look at the elections right now, there's so much confusion from both parties, so much confusion. The enemy thrives on confusion, thrives on keeping people blinded to see the truth. But once you see the truth, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free from the spirit of deception of this age, from the guilt, from the bitterness, from the resentment, from the fear, the worry, the anxiety. I want you to stand to your feet tonight because we're going to go into a moment of prayer. And I think our nation needs some prayer right now. I think the church needs prayer, not just victory, but worldwide. The church is facing a lot of things right now. We're looking at, we're looking at a lot of stuff right now. If the band's not out here, I want the band to come out. We're just going to sing a worship song. And right now, we have some choices to make as we approach what's going on in our world and our nation and this fall, and we go into this next year, we're coming to the end of 2020. Some of us are looking right now with eyes of skepticism, eyes of questioning, where's God? How's God gonna intervene in this situation? What's God gonna do? Once that girl made a decision to separate herself from that company, she, she, she counted the cost. She said, I am not going to keep on wearing these blinders. I am, I am gonna see with the real vision that I can see with. Once you make a decision to start following God's word, there's going to be some people who don't understand it. Have you counted the cost of following Christ? Following Jesus will cost you. It'll cost you possibly even job opportunities. It'll cost you reputation. Once you start seeing with eyes of faith, you're no longer bound by the spirit of fear. But there's other people who are, and they may not like your spirit of faith. Once you take a vision of love, there's people who are bound in a spirit of hate. And they may not like your vision of love, so they might, they might cancel you for your forgiveness. But don't, don't let what the crowd is choosing to do to determine what God has called you to do. Don't let what the crowd sees determine what you're going to see. It's time to move away from the crowd. You are set apart. You're a child of God. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. When you begin to see the world the way God sees it and see your life, and even see the pandemic and see America through the eyes that God wants us to see. Once we get rid of the blinders, we begin to expose the enemy of darkness. And you know what we've been doing right now in this pandemic is our church has been moving forward and exposing that enemy of darkness. We've been bringing hope. We've been seeing God do miracles. Is the virus real? Absolutely. But our God is greater and our God is stronger and our God is mighty and he is mighty to save and he's a good father. I want to pray for you right now because I believe there's some people in the room. There's some vision that needs to shift in your life. There's some sight that needs to change. There's some things maybe even the enemy has just kind of clouded your vision with fear lately. Maybe he's clouded your vision, maybe even with strife in your home. Maybe he's clouded your vision with an offense towards someone. Maybe it's not even offense of what someone did to you, what someone did to somebody else, and you've picked up that offense, and now it's, it's causing you to see things through a filter of resentment, bitterness, 
And maybe God's wanting to set some people free tonight. Maybe God's wanting to give you a vision of love, a vision of faith, a vision of hope, a vision of forgiveness. Maybe even a vision of, of seeing yourself the way God sees you, of confidence. Would you just close your eyes all over this room? My dad used to say, sometimes you have to close your eyes to truly see. Because in the natural, things can seem discouraging. In the natural, things can be confusing. But when you begin to see with eyes in the supernatural, Paul said, open their eyes that they might see. Lord, I pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that you would open the eyes of God of the spirit realm, that we would see with eyes of love, that we would see with eyes that are Christ-like, that we would look at our life and others and situations and problems and even what's going on in our world right now. And God, we would see it the way you see it. Help us to zoom out from what we see in the natural and God give us a vision of supernatural faith. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here tonight, you say, man, I, I need to get my vision healed. I need to get some things in my vision changed. I need the Holy Spirit to help me in some areas of how I've been looking at myself, looking at others, looking at the problems in our world right now. I need to get my eyes fixed on Jesus. If that's you, just raise your hand tonight. You're saying, man, I need to get, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah. All over this room. I need to get washed in the word. I need to get my eyes washed in the word. I need to see what God sees. Yeah. Hands going up all over the room. Secondly, here tonight and say, I'm not right with God, but I want to get right with God. I want to surrender to him. I want him to open my eyes to see. If that's you tonight, raise your hand. You're saying, I'm ready to surrender. Come on. If you raised your hand for any of those or you wanted to, and you just need prayer, come and meet us right now at the altar right now. Come and step out. Meet me at the altar tonight. God wants to give you new eyes. He wants to give you eyes of faith. He wants to give you eyes of love. He wants to give you eyes of hope. He wants to, he wants to heal whatever the vision is, whatever the enemies tried to do. I just sense right now God's wanting to set some people free from even the deception that the enemy's been trying to throw at you. The enemy will profit off of our deception as long as he can. But I think tonight God was opening some eyes. Even as you were watching the film, you were recognizing, man, the enemy's been trying to confuse me. He's been trying to deceive me. He's been trying to blind me. Tonight I'm getting my eyes back on Jesus. I'm getting my eyes renewed in the word of God. Yeah, as you come down to this altar, just kind of hold your hands out. Close your eyes. Lord, I just pray right now, God, that you would give us eyes to see. Open the eyes of our understanding. Help us to see how you see. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us. Help us to see others the way you see them. Help us to see our nation, our world, God, the way you see it. Help us to see the pandemic, the problems that we're facing the way that you see it, not through eyes of fear, not through eyes of hopelessness, not through eyes of division and strife and the blame game, but Lord, through eyes of love, through eyes of faith. Lord, renew our sight, renew our hearts, renew our vision. Just say this with me, Lord, renew my eyes to see what you see. Give me your vision. Help me to see you through your word. Help me to see the world through your word. Give me eyes to see what you want me to see. I thank you, Lord, that I'm free from deception, that I can see clearly in the middle of this pandemic, that I can see with eyes of faith eyes of love, eyes of hope. Lord, heal my heart. Heal my mind. I'm all yours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you, Victory. God bless you.